Welcome to The Lead Clinic. I'm your host, Dr. Peter Vitale, and thanks for joining us today. And we have our first international guest, all the way from Tel Aviv, Israel. We have Arnon Schottenfels from Natural Intelligence. Uh, and Natural Intelligence is, well, I'll let Arnon explain uh, what they do and who they are, but in lead industry uh, uh, terminology, I would say a publisher of leads. Is that how you uh, would uh, describe uh, Natural Intelligence in the lead ecosystem, Arnon? Absolutely, Peter. So first of all, uh, great to be here. It's not every day that you get to uh, join a lead clinic. Uh, so happy uh, to have the chance to join and, and talk a little bit about what we do. Uh, so yeah, Natural Intelligence, uh, as you mentioned, is based in Tel Aviv, Israel. We have offices, of course, in the United States. Hundreds of employees work for the company. Um, what we do is basically intent marketing. So we help consumers make better decisions um, by distilling information uh, that they may come across on the web, give them a few options uh, to choose from or match them uh, with the right uh, provider, in this case, uh, an insurance agent, uh, and basically just make their experience uh, while looking for this service uh, a whole and a better one. And, and that's exactly and that's exactly what we're looking for too, right? We're looking to make sure that consumers are paired with the right end user of a lead product to make a mutually beneficial relationship between the parties. We can't have a situation where consumers are misled. We can't have a situation where the end user of the lead is misled. And what is beautiful and what I told everyone on the very first episode of this podcast was that Part of what I was really looking forward to was bringing on people that I know in this industry that are doing things the right way. Because, Arnon, a lot of, you know, a lot of insurance agents, a lot of small business owners that we talk to day in and day out that, that buy leads and, and buy, you know, use performance marketing for their businesses, you know, I'll often hear lead generation is a scam. But... I think that we could all agree that lead gen done improperly or done unethically is definitely a scam, but there are great players in the business like natural intelligence, and that is why we wanted to bring you on. And I look at it a little like this. You do things different from many of your peers in this industry, um, and I think I read earlier today uh, when I was doing a little research for the show and something that we've talked about many, many times is that you guys really focus uh, quite a bit on Google paid um, advertising, and that's how you're bringing customers into a marketing funnel oftentimes. And there's a few reasons why that's probably the best way, and, and I'd like you to talk a little bit about that and, and your perspective, and, and please do share with us, you know, I think I saw something like top 30 uh, of Google partners by, by Google AdWord revenue, so that's a tremendous, you guys are a tremendous player in this. This is not small. Uh, you guys are a very big, big, big organization. So talk to us a little bit about that. Sure. So Natural Intelligence operates in almost 100 different uh, verticals. Uh, Best Money, uh, which is the wing of the company that I work under, um, basically encompasses all of our financial services, including uh, insurance. Like you mentioned, Peter, uh, in terms of revenue, we do hundreds of millions of dollars uh, as a company, um, and we're one of Google's uh, biggest uh, customers in the world, so top 30 spender on Google uh, worldwide. I think you hit on a really, really important uh, point. You know, when, when you, you kind of think of the psychology of a consumer and, uh, you know, there's, there's different ways to find consumers, right? Like Google is one of them, then there's social media, different types of ads. You know, when someone's searching on Google for a service, they're looking for that service. They want that service, they need that service. The intent is at its peak. It's the highest it could be. If they're scrolling on Facebook or TikTok or whatever the hell it may be, you know, they're being served an ad and maybe they don't want that at that moment or maybe they're just a little intrigued and they click on the ad, but their level of intent is just different. And so by focusing and really honing uh, our skills as a company on Google, that's just what's 
made us best uh, or, or first in class. And so the, the, the bread and butter of natural intelligence is Google paid search. Um, and that's really what, uh, what we're best at. So here's, I, I'm gonna translate this into my, my, my old kind of language and my, own, my old thought pattern before I really got into lead generation as an insurance agent. And this is what I may be saying at this point, Arnon, is okay, Google paid search. Why can't I just as let's say an insurance agent or let's say you know a mortgage originator or a flooring contractor why can't I just why why would natural intelligence and the leads that you provide and right you know we provide our clients in in the insurance vertical leads from natural intelligence all the time um, why would you tell those people that they shouldn't do their own Google paid search campaigns but you know let a huge enterprise like yours, uh, you know, do it for them. What's the benefit of that, Arnon? That's an amazing question. I think, you know, first of all, it's possible, right? Uh, and it's and it's important to say that. But there, I mean, the level at which we have been able to bring our game in terms of utilizing the Google uh, the Google space is just unparalleled. So we have an army of people here. We're hundreds of people. We have analysts. We, uh, you know, we we pride ourselves on the fact that you know it's kind of like we have a university, an in-house university to to teach people how to buy this media on Google. Um, you know, we we hire lawyers. We hire uh, we hire PhDs. We hire uh, engineers, and we teach them how to buy media on Google. So it really just becomes an art and the, you know there there are so many intricacies and once you know you're you're an individual agent you know you might have um, you know a, a business that's maybe tens of people you know that that your ability to go out there and compete with us uh, is is just not really there and I think, Something that's important, you know, when you're trying to grow your business is focus at what you're good at. You know, I, 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 I am not uh, an insurance agent and, you know, I, I probably would not uh, do justice to anybody buying, uh, buying insurance. But um, at the same token, you know, you don't want people who are uh, who are selling insurance to become experts at uh, at Google paid search because that's going to be very difficult. And let's look at it this way too, right? You work with some of the world's biggest brands today, so I, I think the point too that that I kind of want to follow up. And I, I know I'm, I asked you a question. I'm not trying to answer it better or different. Well, I'm trying to answer it a little different because this is how I want it to really resonate with small business owners here, right? Some of the world's biggest brands use natural intelligence to run paid search campaigns for them. So if you have companies that have thousands of people in massive budgets, and they're the ones that are coming to you guys as the experts too, then to the, you know, quite respectfully to the folks who, who would have asked that same question a minute ago before I did, why don't I just run my own? Well, if the world's largest brands aren't running their own, perhaps they realize too that having specialists can do it much, much better. Would you agree with that? A hundred percent. I think we, you know, once you, you're kind of focusing on what you're good at and outsourcing the pieces that others can do very well, then you're just focusing on growing your business, doing what you know how to do best. I'm focusing on growing my business and agents have to focus on growing their, their business. And I, you know, I, I love meeting agents that are, you know, they have grit, you know, they're, they have their guys on the phones all day. They're doing their thing and we're doing our thing, making sure that every single call that those guys make is not a call waste. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so one thing that we talk about frequently in our interactions that I think is the most important, and I want to spend some time on it because I think it's going to benefit the, the small business owners that are listening to this podcast is gathering disposition data back from businesses and, and really 
there's a disconnect in my mind between the way the large brands operate and provide disposition data back and the way that smaller businesses do. And why is it critical? Because I'll be very honest with you, right? As an insurance agent, as someone who did this, you know, many years ago, I, I was just kind of skeptical of everybody about everything. And I would often say, you want the disposition data back because you want to know when I bind the policyholders so you can remarket them in six months when their policy comes up for renewal. I really was skeptical about it. And, and maybe, you know, quite candidly, probably a little over paranoid. But that's not what the goal is with the disposition data back. Tell us what the goal is and then tell us, you know, kind of what the benefits are and why this is so critical and, and how you guys are using it to like, you know, match back to the actual ads and see what ads are performing better. Tell us all about that because I think that's a great lesson for everyone listening here uh, to hear, you know, why we're doing what we're doing and why we're asking for that data back. Yeah, amazing. And I have to say in my tenure here, I've definitely, you know, uh, kind of encountered uh, partners and, and clients who or who come to the table with that same mindset. And then, you know, there's usually like this point in the relationship when they start sharing that disposition data and things just kind of take off. And this is the reason, you know, when whenever um, I kind of get get that question or people are or, you know, agents are kind of hesitating about that, I ask a simple question. Are you in the business of buying leads or selling insurance policies? And usually, usually the answer is I'm in the business of selling insurance policies. And so for me to be able to help, uh, you know, the agent be able to do that better, what I need is to know what's working for you, right? So if I'm sending you leads and I don't know what's working, then I can't send you more of that. And so basically what we're asking for is send me the information knowing, okay, this lead turned into a policy and then I can go back to my campaigns, I can go back to my algorithms and basically let them know, okay, this consumer turned into a, uh, into a policy, let's go look for more of those type of consumers. And the bigger the data set and the longer we're getting th this data, the more we're able to really kind of hone that process. And, and the, 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 the proof is in the pudding, M meaning like once we start getting that data back, you basically can see kind of like that quote to policy ratio just steadily starting to, to climb. And it, it's basically a win-win situation for everybody. Yeah, exactly. And, and right at the end of the day, we have to measure results. If we're not measuring results, how are we gonna improve and how are we gonna get better? And I think what, what the, there's, there's definitely a disconnect and this is part of the reason that I started this podcast is to bridge the knowledge together between what we know, what you know, what small business owners, what everyone, and really bridge that knowledge gap. And what I see here, Arnon, is that Everyone in the small business world today views that lead vendors are kind of all of natural intelligence leads might be the same or all of this company's leads, but that's not true. You're running many different campaigns through many different methods, using many different advertisements, different colors, different text, and really have to get granular to figure out what's converting better because every consumer isn't the same, every business isn't the same, every industry isn't the same, and you guys run advertising for many different industries. And you know, I remember hearing uh, at, uh, at one of the uh, events I attended um, that your company hosted, one of the events someone was saying you know, that in online dating and, and, and uh, internet gambling, some of two of your biggest and most profitable verticals, and, I think when everyone hears lead generation, they hear lead generation and they think like, yeah, insurance is the only you know, industry that buys leads or the industry they're in, whether it's contractors, you know, whether it's lawyers, whoever it is, they think that lead generation really exists just in that industry. But you guys are, are kind of very broad in this and, and doing this for many different industries. Could you talk a little bit about you know, how the company started, kind of where your focus is today and which vertical and you know, which verticals you're looking to expand? Sure. So the company was founded uh, 13 years ago. And um, the first vertical uh, that was started was actually online dating. 
and that's kind of how we uh, uh, how we got off the ground. And as I mentioned, like since we've we've been expanding into different areas where we see opportunity, I think one of the great things is in many instances we're dealing with very different businesses. Like you mentioned, online dating has nothing to do. Uh, you know, with insurance and gambling in the UK has nothing to do with mortgage, which is which is a huge vertical for us as well. But, you know, being in so many different niches, you can always take a bit from here and learn what works well there and kind of be able to, to build something that's uh, that's more holistic. And I think that's really what, you know, has served us well over you know, a, a, a very long time. Now I was gonna say, and right, this all comes down to, right, advertising and marketing, it all comes down to human behavior and, and you know, getting people's attention, right? Gathering attention. And while, you know, internet dating and uh, internet gambling and, and insurance may not have a lot to do uh, with each other, the one thing is you're trying to get people's attention and that is the focus. And when you can do that at scale, there's obviously massive results you can you can drive for your partners and clients. Uh, you'd agree with that and you'd, you'd suggest that that's... A hundred percent. Okay. Yeah, a hundred percent. Now, part of the reason that, that folks listen to this podcast, Arnon, is because, you know, we're not afraid to kind of call out... Um, you know, what I would call uh, deceptive or, you know, maybe a little unethical or gray area type stuff. And, you know, there's a lot of different people doing things in strange ways in this industry. And I would suggest, based on the vetting that I've done of your company, that that, that doesn't exist. But there are no doubt people in the ecosystem that do that. And I call this, Arnon, the race to the bottom, right? Um, and I, I'll say this specific to insurance agents because this is the world I live in and this is what I know, is there was this race to the bottom in terms of pricing for leads. And, and I know everyone's kind of rolling their eyes and they're like, okay, Peter and Arnon are here telling us, you know, basically we're gonna all pay Buy more money. Buy expensive leads. Buy expensive leads, yeah. right? <laughs> but I've always said my entire life, right? Price is only relevant in the absence of value, right? doesn't matter how much something costs if you're deriving the value from it, right? By way of example, I could buy a lead for a million dollars today. If I'm guaranteed to turn that one million into three million, which is not, you know, like, right? No one could guarantee that. But if they could, you would do that all day, every day, right? And the same, would you buy a $5 lead if it converted seven times more likely than a $1 lead, right? The math makes sense there. And I think that we're truly aligned in the way that we view this, not that we want people to pay us more per lead because it's gonna make us more money, but what we're looking at is wasting less time and having the operational efficiencies in their business when we're taking that garbage out of the system. And I feel that that's really where you guys come into play here. And, you know, so, so just talk a little bit about pricing, how you see things, you know, your business model is a little different than most, you know, lead publishers because you're, you're relying a lot on Google. And obviously, you know, Google's taking a bulk of the money, right, from their advertising platform. But as you described earlier. A big bulk. A big bulk. Uh, and, and you're seeing, right, but we're seeing that these convert at a higher rate. And so the price is only relevant in the absence of value, and the, the value derived from these products is much larger than some of your biggest competitors. Would you tell us a little more about that, why you feel that way, and kind of why you guys do things a little different? Yeah, so first of all, I'll kind of, I guess, separate my answer into two. And, and for the first part, I'll kind of take you back a little bit in, in my own personal history. So. Cards on the table, I've been at Natural Intelligence for only coming on about three years now. Before I worked here, I worked at uh, JP Morgan in the Wealth Management Division um, for many years. And that's a really, uh, I, I'll call it a relationship-based business, yeah. right? You know, like people save, you know, they save up their life savings and, you know, you have to help them plan for their retirement for their futures, you know, make sure their kids are taken care of. It's a lot of responsibility. And also you kind of build trust there with, uh, with, uh, with, with your clients. And so that's a very, 
I guess I'd call it fiduciary and, and special relationship. And so when I when I, I was learning this business, I was a little surprised just at the nature of uh, of what I was seeing that was just very transactional, you know. So like, you know, I, I'm I'm selling you this lead. What happens with it after that, you know, like that's your problem. And, you know, whether I'm selling it to you for three bucks or seven bucks or 12 bucks, like it is what it is. And, you know, like call me tomorrow, I'll sell you another one. And I, and so, first of all, I think that the, the approach of our company is very different and it's building long term relationships. And you can ask my wife for a long term relationship to work. Uh, you have to put work into it and you have to invest into it. And so if I learn today what works for you and we, we kind of invest into that, then we can grow together. I can help you grow your business. You can help me grow my business. Everybody's happy. And, and so, so that's one piece of it. And then the second piece is, is exactly what you were talking about. It's value. At the end of the day, I think what an insurance agent should care about is one, how much did it cost me to acquire uh, to, to acquire this customer, right? And B, how efficient was I uh, acquiring that customer? So you know, if I'm gonna buy ten leads for one dollar, and you know, I'm gonna get one customer out of that, or I could buy. Uh, one lead for ten dollars but also get one customer out of that you know you look at that and you say okay i mean it's 10 bucks here and 10 bucks there not exactly because basically you're you know you're you're using your time your people's time resources you're to get to try and get these people on the phone many times unsuccessfully and so i think that's you know that's a major point that that you have to take into consideration so one is just the relationship and building something long term that is financially viable for all sides and then the second part is just supplying you with the right type of lead um and by the way not you know some agents are you know they specialize in non-standard and and Others, you know, might have a different niche they're into. You, you really need to learn what the uh, what the folks that are buying the leads from you are looking for, and be able to kind of tailor solutions and leads uh, for each one. Yeah, I definitely agree with that, it, and that makes so much sense. And really, I would say this right: the average insurance agent, our non, let's just use them as our small business examples. Everyone who listens to this show regularly know that's what I like to talk about because that's who I am and that's, you know, uh, small business owners like insurance agents are the people that I care about, right? And, and I think here at Lead Clinic, right, that, that's our biggest differentiator from, from our competitors in the business. And, um, you know, I think that uh, transparency solves most of the problems in the lead ecosystem. And I also think, right, that we have to align the consumer experience. And I think that companies like like yours are really keeping that at the center of their minds, at the top of their mind in this, in this, in this exercise that we're doing in lead generation, right? If the person who's filling out an online form then unexpectedly gets barraged with, you know, hundreds of phone calls over a, a week or two week period and you know it then is on every email list from from now and you know everyone that exists uh, and they're constantly being marked as you know or they're constantly getting spam emails it's just not a friendly experience from the consumer's perspective i think we have to be respectful but, please yeah but by the way peter no no sorry to cut in but by the way i don't know many people who will end up answering a phone call after they've been bombarded with many phone calls, many emails, and actually transact. Yeah. More likely is that they're going to pick up the phone and say, never call me again. Yeah. Right? I mean, that, it, it gonna be very mad. that's, that's yeah. my experience. Right. Well, that's my experience, too. That's what I would do. I think that's what a reasonable person would do, right, after being barraged that many times, right? It's kind of crazy. You have to be respectful of the entire interaction on both sides. And 
And so when we're, we're seeing this, you know, tell us about kind of what your thoughts are on this and, and what you guys are doing, to, you know, and, and what your thoughts are and kind of how you, you take the, the prospects, you know, uh, mindset uh, into your thought process as you're developing your, your tools and techniques to develop leads for small businesses. Sure. So first of all, I think, you know, just by concentrating on, uh, on Google paid search traffic, Kind of like I mentioned, we're taking folks who are, you know, they're looking, they're looking for this. So, you know, they're, they're sitting at home, they're going on their computer, maybe they got a notice that their policy is, uh, is coming due. And, you know, they look up best uh, auto insurance in Texas, right? And, and basically, they're, they're searching for the product. And so, and then once they come in, they're filling out a questionnaire. It's, it's a pretty lengthy questionnaire above uh, more than 20 questions. And then basically that allows us to understand who this consumer is, who, um, who you know, who their, uh, their past insurance was with, different demographics uh, um, and, you know, just driving history that could affect pricing. And so then that lets you match them better with um, uh, with the right agent for them. And, you know, I think something that we're uh, very strict about is um, we, we sell our leads only one time. So if an agent buys the lead from me, he doesn't have to worry uh, about buying uh, that, that I'm going to sell that lead again just for the reason we just discussed because that just kind of dilutes the the quality of the lead the person starts getting you know a million calls and and that's not the right experience i think you know if you're gonna get only one call and you know you can have a real conversation with the consumer then you can also discover needs and someone who you know was looking for auto insurance they may they may uh, end up with a homeowner uh, policy, and who knows? Maybe with a pet insurance policy. You know, like it just it, it and that mindset is really important. And so I think you know when when you just think of you know so someone's already coming through. You know, they're coming to this questionnaire. They're already answering twenty some questions. Now we're going to have you know eight different agents call them. No, that's that's just a that's just a bad experience and and you know we we want people because because best money is not only an auto uh, insurance lead gen and we operate in other financial verticals. I manage, by the way, the the, the entire insurance business for natural intelligence. So that includes life insurance, homeowners, uh, renters, pet insurance, uh, soon to be commercial. So we we you know we want people to come back to us. You know, we want them to trust to trust us. We want them to have the right type of experience. And and, you know, if we can provide that, then, you know, it's true. We're, we're paying a lot uh, of money to Google to, to bring this consumer to us. But bringing them back, that's free. But wh when I say free, it's it's free if you do right by them. And so I think that's that's something that's very important. Yeah. And focusing on, right, the consumer journey is we have to. We have to, you know, and I can't tell you how many times as an insurance agent I would get leads. I'd have no idea where they came from or what their journey was, whether they clicked on an ad in, in Candy Crush, as one woman told me very nicely one day. I asked her why she was so disengaged. Never, never heard that one. Well, never heard I'll that tell one you the story. This is crazy. That I was listening to one of my producers on the phone, and this conversation, the person could not have been more disinterested. And I just thought it was so weird. I was like, why, why are they reaching out to us? Why are they putting, raising their hand and saying, I want insurance, but now they're not pretending like they're not. And so I took over the phone call and I just asked her, I said, listen, you're never going to buy insurance. You don't even sound like you care what the price is. And she said, you're right. I, have, I don't care. I said, well, why did you fill out the information? You know what she told me or not? She said, I ran out of Candy Crush Lives, and so what did I do? An ad came up, and I could get free Candy Crush Lives by filling out a form, and that's what I did. She was so disengaged. It, it, it was very evident from the phone call, and that's the kind of thing that doesn't really help the consumer journey. It doesn't help the small business owner on the other end trying to 
trying to turn that person into a customer. But these are frustrations that small business owners like insurance agents face every day. And so now think, so now think about this. Why buy 10 Candy Crush leads exactly that were that were sold three times each yep. instead of buying you know a lead that can actually convert yep. and not only that you know like we we also see evidence that uh, the level on intent in Google doesn't only bear on the the first six months or year right that policy when that renewal comes up Google consumers have a much higher uh, propensity to to renew with the same agent. Correct. And, you know, so, and, and, and these are kind of things that, you know, I, I, I don't, you, you can tell me, but I don't know how many agents are kind of sitting there and doing the math a year later, looking at, you know, who are my consumers who renewed? Where did they come from? Because, you know, the, you have to look at the lifetime value of a, of a consumer as well. It's not like a one and done. Exactly. And especially in, in, in businesses like insurance where you have the lifetime value, right? This is a game in insurance where insurance agents are often not making money the first year or two of a policy relationship sometimes, but they understand it might be a six or seven year relationship. So they're willing to see the long-term value of that. And by using the right lead sources, you maximize that long-term value. And, and you're exactly right. And that's something that I preach to small business owners every day when I talk to them about leads for insurance and other industries as well. And, you know, I, I want to talk about the benefits of working with a lead aggregator like Lead Clinic because, you know, as you alluded to, you guys do sell leads directly to some agencies as well. Now, let's talk a little bit about the scale of agencies, the size of agencies, the, um, you know, kind of what the challenges are with some of the ultra small businesses that may go in, and buy directly for you, whether it's technology or things like that. So what I'm really getting at is most insurance agents are very, very small businesses. Let's call them under 10 employees, almost nearly all of them. And what's the yeah. challenge? You know, why does it benefit them to work with a lead aggregator like Lead Clinic instead of buying direct from you? Yeah, so I, I think that that's a great question. And you know, if I had the capacity to hook into to, you know every small business and supply them with leads, that's probably what I'd want to do. It's just that's not that's not very feasible. It's, it's not very feasible for me, and it's also not feasible for someone who's running, you know, a 10-person 10 biz, a, a business and has to pay for SaaS costs, you know, different programs. You know, you have Lead Cloud, you, you have Jornaya, you, you know, you have all this technology that, that's required to, uh, to properly manage uh, a lead business. And again, it just goes back to that point of, you know, if you concentrate on what you're best at and you find people who you can trust and who you enjoy doing business with that you can trust for a certain piece of of what you need you're going to win and so for me working you know working with the lead clinic just makes a lot of sense because you guys are on a mission uh to help small businesses and that's an easy way for me to connect in into that and so it's a winning proposition for me. And because, you know, there's full transparency between me and you uh, being lead clinic. And I know that there's full transparency from lead clinic uh, to the agents. Then I, I kind of know that loop is working. And, uh, and it's just a mu much easier lift for, for a small agency to, to be able to get the value of, of someone like us without having, you know, to pay for, for all the setup costs. And that's really what, what it gets down to, is that there's massive technology costs that, that are involved in lead distribution. And lead generators don't often rely on direct relationships with the end user of that lead. Sometimes they do. But 
Normally, they do not because of the very high technology costs. This is not a situation where you're, you know, at, at Natural Intelligence uh, have integrations built with every insurance agent CRM, and that's not something you want to do. Now, could you do it for the right-sized agency? Perhaps, but could you do it for all the smallest agencies and, and a normal, let's call it all state, state farm, farmers agency? Of course not. It would be unsustainable. But folks who built that out already, like we have at Lead Clinic, and you know, get a text message when you get a new lead, get an email when you get a new lead, have it go right into your CRM of your choice, have it maybe go into your rating system if you're an independent agent. We're the ones who are really building out that technology and it's not the lead publishers like you, so you would rely on the small businesses to do that because you're not in the business of making an integration with, let's just say, Salesforce or you know uh, Ricochet or you know one of these other um, CRMs that many agencies and small businesses you know use today. So I think that's from my perspective why. But at the same time, we want to give people. And our clients at Lead Clinic, the best of both worlds, because you can have where you're buying a lead through an aggregator like us, but we're providing you transparency. And that is the name of the game, is that if we're all honest and open together and can trust one another, we can do things the right way. And I think that's the value that we add. And, you know, and, and quite frankly, we also, you know, as part of that, we're requiring our clients to provide us disposition data back because, right, the mutual respect has to go both ways. And here it has to go three ways. It has to go from, you know, let's call it the small business owner that we work with to us, from us to them, from us to you, from you to us, and from you to them and them to you too, right? That's the way this has to work. So providing, you know, the disposition data or as you called it, what did you call it, down funnel uh Metrics, down funnel, down funnel metrics, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? That providing that back helps us all get better together. And that's what's been missing in this industry for so long in my mind is getting better together. Um, and that's, you know, one of the favorite parts about my partnership, you know, with, with, uh, with you and, you know, we can truly work to get better together. And, you know, what else can we do as small business owners, as lead aggregators, what can we do to, to really make this a, a more beneficial partnership from your perspective? Anything besides the things we're already doing? I, I think it's just important to note um, that, that this is now an option. I think it's, it's important to get the word out there that, you know, like a program like this that Lead Clinic uh, offers is, is something that you can do. You know, you don't have to buy Candy Crush leads anymore. Um, you know, I'm, 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 I'm joking, but, but I'm serious, also serious, serious you know, very like, serious. Yeah. No, th th there's something very revolutionary about this idea in a world that as far as I can tell has been doing a lot of the same for a very long time and they've made it work, but it doesn't mean it's working well and it doesn't mean it can't be working a lot better. And this is a model that's already proving itself. And I think it's just going to grow and grow. Um, and, and for me, it's just important that, you know, at Natural Intelligence, we keep supplying Lead Clinic and through Lead Clinic, you know, a vast amount of agents in the United States with the best leads that we can. And that's how trust is going to be built. And, you know, it's, it's, it's cyclical and it kind of feeds itself, you know, like what once it starts working and you understand that that you you really grasp the value then then that's it it's it's game over we we figured it out already you're exactly right you're exactly right one thing that you mentioned and that candidly we haven't talked about that i heard here on this podcast for the first time is that you know you guys are have commercial insurance on your your roadmap right now can you tell us a little more about what that looks like and kind of uh, how you see it developing and, you know, a, a timeline of, uh, of, of when you suspect that product will be live? Because insofar as I know, we don't see a lot of commercial leads and it's something I'm often asked for by a variety of agents. Yeah, so we've been getting uh, over the last few months a lot of those requests. And so our strategy team at Natural Intelligence was kind of scoping out this business and 
um, and looking at its size, and it definitely uh, was something that uh, that piqued our interest. Um, you know, commercial world is, you know, very interesting, very vast. Obviously, there are so many small businesses in the United States. A lot of commercial insurance is actually auto commercial. Uh, so there, there's that relationship there. Um, and we do expect uh, we do expect commercial insurance to launch um, within about three months or so. And we also just launched travel insurance. So um, yeah, n natural intelligence is all in uh, when when it comes to insurance, you know, especially auto. I think th there hasn't been you know like a company meeting here where the in I guess the last year where you know our CEO hasn't been talking about auto and this initiative, and you know auto insurance is not in in its best uh, uh, in in its heyday. There are, you know a lot of difficulties. Insurance companies are reeling right now. You know loss ratios are, are are not looking great. But I think for natural intelligence, we actually kind of saw this as an opportunity. We have deep pockets. We can kind of weather the storm, and I think we feel that you know if we build relationships through this time, we'll we'll come out of this stronger on the other side, and and that's exactly what we're doing. And I agree with that, and I agree with that a hundred percent because we know that the auto insurance world is, is not immensely profitable today. But right, the, as the economy goes through, you know, it's normal cycles, and inflation, you know, starts to go down again. You know, we'll see auto insurers, you know, start to at least break even and not lose billions a year, uh, and we'll want to grow policyholders once again. So what I tell insurance agents today, too, right? When they're like, Peter, you know, I don't have a carrier that'll write some of these risks because they're pulling out of markets I'm in, you know, that, that's fine, but keep us in mind for when they do, you know, or try and shift to a market in which you can write um, something, whether it's a different state or a different subset of insurance, and, you know, we can weather the storm together and get through this. But I think that, that you guys have come into this world at the right time, although it may not seem that way today, I think that for the reasons you're suggesting, that it really will prove yourself to be a partner who's with not only the carriers, but, you know, the agents as well, through the tough times, you know, and you're helping us weather the storm, right, there's going to be a mutual respect back um, for that. So, um, a hundred percent. Yeah. When, when, you know, when you look at kind of the, the macroeconomics, it's been a very, very long time um, since uh, since the word inflation uh, what was used. And, and, you know, since we saw inflation, it's been years, you know, like since 2000, it, you know, pre 2008 is the last time we saw inflation. And so th I think things feel very emotional now because it's been 15 years with no inflation in all, at all. And all of a sudden, you know, we're in a world where there's a, a good amount, a moderate amount of inflation, and it, it's taking its toll on a, a lot of different areas. But, uh, you know, an economy is cyclical. What goes around comes around. And, you know, let's put it this way. The, the insurance industry, I, I mean, it's a staple of the economy. They're, you know, like... Just because things are a certain way now doesn't mean it's going to continue that way, and we we feel very strongly about that. And and we do too, and that's part of the reason you know we're grateful for our partnership with you, and and you know being able to offer these extremely high quality and extremely valuable leads to to our insurance agent partners, um, and that's something you know that we're grateful for, and we thank you for because. You're supporting our mission in transparency. You're supporting our mission, you know, in, in providing agents with, with a high value, um, you know, con, uh, high converting uh, lead. And we thank you for that. And, you know, one thing that I want to say, too, um, that I think is important to recognize is that at Lead Clinic, right, we're not just in the business of selling leads um, we're not, right? We, we provide automated contact solutions. We provide relationships uh, and, and uh, um, proprietary templates into some CRMs that we're uh, going to be rolling out very soon uh, for insurance agents. And I really view us as a customer acquisition company. And we have strategically positioned ourselves to offer 
very valuable leads from very reputable and, and very honest and trustworthy publishers like Natural Intelligence, but also providing partnerships with our automated contact systems and our CRMs to really help agents leverage those valuable leads to, to make them work better at a more enterprise and more robust um, you know, scale um, and technology tools available. So I think too, that that's kind of my plug for what we do um, is that not only do we bridge the gap between the publisher and the lead buyer, but then we provide the lead buyer the tools so they get the maximum value out of the leads that, that they're buying from us from you really through us. And I think that's that's yeah. a huge value add um, to the yeah. small businesses we work with. And, and what's great about that, by the way, is the, the one-stop shop approach, especially, you know, when, when we're not talking about, you know, businesses with hundreds of people, the, the ability to kind of take it full circle and and be able to provide all those services is huge. And, you know, when you're buying a lead that's not a $1 candy crush lead, you want to make sure you're, you know, you're seeing it through, uh, you know, uh, end to end. And so it's important to, to, to take advantage of, of all of those tools. Well, it, and, and I agree wholeheartedly. And, you know, I, I like to always end these podcasts by trying to get a commitment from the guest on something, and this one will be fun, Arnon. And I know that you know you probably can't commit natural intelligence uh, uh, and, and hold the whole organization to this, but I think in this case you will um, be able to very easily because the only commitment that we want from you today is that you will not now nor ever be offering free Candy Crush Lives in exchange for people filling out a lead gen form. You, you think you can commit to that for us? As hard as it is to do, and without CEO permission, I will commit to no Candy Crush leads. Well, that, absolutely. That's, that's perfect. <laughs> that, yeah. That's no, perfect. I, we'll hold you to it, and we appreciate that uh, because, listen, we want high converting kind of, you know, I, I'm kind of, I say, say it how I feel and say it how it is, right? This is a no bullshit approach. We, we don't want that stuff. Nobody should be buying it. It's not good for the consumer. It's not good for the end user of the lead. It's not good for me. It's not good for you. It wastes everyone's time. So we appreciate your commitment to that, Arnon. And we thank you for joining us on the Lead Clinic today. And is there anything else, you know, I know I've asked you a lot of questions. Anything else that, that you think is important that you want to share with our audience today? I, you know, I'll, first of all, this was really fun. Thanks for having me on. Uh, always a pleasure speaking to you, Peter. And I, I'm a huge fan of the way you do business. And I think, you know, from the first moment we met, I kind of understood the the approach you take to things. And I think that the 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 folks, the agents who are doing business with you, should just know that they're in great hands. Uh, from a guy who you know, was on the beat just like them and, you know, and, and w was driven to do this, not from necessity, not from, you know, uh, uh, financial necessity, but doing this because you believe in it uh, because, you know, you want to help other people, uh, yeah. which which is amazing. And we're right there with you and we're excited to see this thing grow. And we have full faith that that's what's going to happen. Well, thank you. Those, thank you for the kind words. I appreciate it. And I, you know, authenticity and, and transparency are two of the most important things in any business relationship. And, and that's, you know, that's candidly, you know, those are our core values here at Lead Clinic. And that's what we're offering, not only to the end user of our leads, but also through, you know, respecting the prospect, the person who's putting their information out there. Um, and so by doing and, and really, really, valuing the relationship on all ends, we're doing business the right way. So it's great to have great partners uh, like the folks at Natural Intelligence and Arnon. And I will say that at the time we recorded this, 
you know, it's about started, you know, close to five o'clock Eastern time. And as I said at the beginning, Arnon's in Tel Aviv. So it's very late there. It's probably a little after one, maybe about 1.20 in the morning now. So I, I can't thank you enough for not only doing this, uh, but really staying up late on a weekend for us to get this recorded too. So, uh, and that's in the kind of friendship and, and partnership that we have that we would easily ask each other to do this and know the other person would say yes, no problem. But it's still very, 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 uh, you know, thank you. It's, uh, it means a lot our, to me. No, our pleasure. And, you know, the team here, the, the insurance team here, um, our, our motto is insurance don't sleep. So uh, <laughs> it's all good. I love it. I We're insurance 24-7. I love it. Well, thanks, Arnon, so much. It was great having you on. And uh, we value uh, the partnership that we formed together and look forward to bringing it to many more you know, not only insurance agents, but small businesses through the other verticals uh, that uh, NI and Lead Clinic uh, works with today and will work with in the future. So it's been a pleasure. Thanks Excellent. for joining us. And uh, we'll talk again Thank soon. You. Take care, Peter. Be well. You too, my friends. Mm -hmm.